Hi, everyone. So I want to give a shorter talk to finish things off this evening, and that is about the potential alternatives to getting a mentor. Alternatives. I know, read the room. I understand the theme of the evening. I'm not here to be that antagonist, antagonistic, like keynote, you know, ending thing. That's not the point. And before I go any further, I think what everyone said in terms of mentoring is important. They are great. They're going to help me progress and progress your career forward, right? But, but what if you can't find that right person at the right time? So I'm 12 years into my career, and people with my experience tend to find helping people really rewarding. We're aware that we've got to where we've got to with the help of other people. And actually, helping other people is a big part of why I chose line management. It's a big part of the role, and it's rewarding and helpful. But outside of work at the moment, I'm not a mentor, and almost admitting that I feel like a, a bit embarrassing, but it's, it's true, and, and I still won't be for a while. Because inside of work, I use all of my time and focus on my team. They're amazing, right? There's six of us, lots of growing and progressing to do. And in fact, they're so important that I use some of that time outside of work on the team of work. So the rest of my time, you know how it is. Life admin stuff's hard. Um, I don't want to put anyone off becoming a mentor. I think you absolutely should do it. But there's there's challenges, okay? So I don't want to commit to something or someone at this stage that perhaps I can't honour yet. And I don't think I'm alone in this. I keep meeting people with decent experience who are a little bit hesitant. And maybe it's that imposter syndrome, maybe it's time, maybe it's like a combination of all of those things. I don't know. So what if there's other ways to grow your career? What would those alternatives be? Well, there's the free stuff, right? You know about that. The articles, the podcasts, the newsletters, YouTube. And there's the paid stuff. Again, you know all of that stuff. The books, the courses, the conferences, maybe even events like these. Give yourself a pat on the back. You've come to a good one. And even career coaches, if you're willing to invest, there's lots out there. But there's two bits I don't think get enough attention. And I want to talk about those this evening. So one of those is your peers. And the second one is the clumsily labeled questions and then people. Now it's really clumsily labeled because I had a conversation with Danny about a week ago where I tried to explain this to him. And then we just kind of stared at each other as we tried to think of a phrase for what it could be. And after some awkward staring, we just, we've landed here. So peers and questions and people. But let's start with peers. What do I mean? Well, from everything we talked about tonight, we've kind of framed like aiming for those people who are ahead of you in their career. And I want you to think about people who are with a similar level of experience to you. So if you're three years in, if you're one years in, even if you haven't got that job yet and you're still looking for it, I think those people with your shared experience levels are really important and overlooked. So I'm not saying that because they've got the same level of experience as you, they've suddenly got more time. That's not true, but maybe, maybe there's a more obvious exchange of value there. So when we think about these people, these peers, maybe you've worked with them. And I think previous colleagues are probably more impartial and helpful than current ones. Maybe you've met these peers at events like this evening. So make sure you say hello to people sat next to you. Or maybe you've just interacted with them on Danny's very interactive Slack channel and the Twitter interactions and all those other bits and pieces, whatever your favorite platform is. If we were to like draw out like an ideal peer then, I think it would be someone who's a little bit different to you. And then and yeah, different culturally, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, all of those things are really important. But even different route into UX or career background or past or history is all gonna be helpful. Because what I think I'm suggesting is someone that you can be comfortable with, but someone who's going to challenge you, someone who's going to come with a different view and ultimately offer you a bit of a different perspective. And as neither of you are mentors, maybe you're both mentors, maybe you're not, I'm not sure. Hopefully the point is that you'll both be compelled to bring topics to the conversation. And maybe they'll ask you things that you haven't encountered yet. Maybe they'll ask you things you haven't even considered yet. And maybe when you say things out loud and explain and describe what's going on, it'll help you understand and process those things a lot better 
than just thinking through them by yourselves. So you're not always going to have an answer. They're not always going to have an answer. And as many as the mentors here will admit, they don't always have an answer. But the point is here, you're hoping to kind of solve things together and grow together and hopefully have regular catch-ups like you do with a mentor. And if that kind of format works for you, then maybe you can go out and find other people you could have these one-to-ones with and continue these conversations. So the second point is all about questions. Questions and then people. And what do I mean? Well, let's go back to those conversations we're having now, hopefully with our peers or mentors. We're gonna have specific questions, right? There's the obvious craft-based ones, so design, research, and going back to those free and paid resources, I think for the most part, they're pretty well covered. But the questions I'm interested in are the less frequent ones, but important. You know, the ones around career, so pay, interviews, promotions. Maybe it's like a politics and people question, you know, that involves stakeholders or collaboration. Sure, there's a ton of articles out there. Sure, there's a ton of talks, but those things are always unique and just slightly different each time. So we've got a question, now what? Well, now let's start considering people. People we know with more experience and more experience in the area that you're specifically stuck on. And as such, I don't think that means they have to be in your discipline anymore because if it's a career-based question, then maybe those neighboring disciplines can help you. And if we're thinking about neighboring disciplines and even disciplines that are a bit kind of one removed again, we're opening up that pool of people that we can go and talk to. So if we're thinking of these people again, right, maybe we've worked with them or for them. Maybe you've met them in real life at events like this evening, or maybe you've seen them talk or share content on a specific topic. So a couple of years ago at Magix, where Danny unfortunately worked for a little while. We did this big, big piece of research and we were looking at people and how they planned their medium to long-term careers. So as any good research kind of project and discovery does, we went off and interviewed a load of people. One of the people we interviewed was this graduate called Melanie. Now, Melanie was incredibly ambitious and incredibly intelligent. And she knew exactly what she wanted to be. And that was, a chief marketing officer. So what Melanie was doing was all of the good things, right? She was off um, networking, she was doing all the courses and bits and pieces. Um, But one of the things that stuck out to us was that she had found this podcast and this podcast had a guest on. And the guest was really interesting. The episode was really interesting to her. And being really intelligent, ambitious, she did something that was obvious to her, which kind of blew our minds. She just contacted her afterwards. And we were like, what? Anyway, so this guest had been a chief marketing officer at all these big tech companies. So the the person then replied to her and all of a sudden they had this incredible conversation. And I'd like to tell you that they, you know, she got offered a dream job or even that she became a mentor. Neither of those two things happened, but they had an hour long conversation And that conversation put Melanie on a path and changed her mindset on something that she'd never have got to before. And you know what? She never spoke to that chief marketing officer again, but that was okay. She kind of was out there if she ever needed to go and ask another question. So what that kind of sketchy recollection of that research is trying to tell you is that as this person we're thinking about isn't your mentor or in regular contact with you, you're gonna need to drive everything. So you're going to need to frame your questions and probably frame them as concisely as possible. So rather than just saying, I've got a career-based question on pay, maybe it's, how do I negotiate for a better salary for my recent job offer? And rather than just like, a, I've got a stakeholder question, maybe it's, how do I persuade a senior stakeholder to invest in some research? And when we contact these people, We want to make sure, make it clear that maybe we only want an hour of their time. It's just the conversation and we could be flexible on when, we could be flexible on where, be it online or in real life and, you know, go in with that super grateful offer. I'll buy you coffee, I'll buy you lunch, all of those other things, you know, that stuff. And it's okay. They might say no, but if they don't, 
you've just had a conversation with someone that could change your whole perspective and they don't have to sign up and agree to be this kind of long-term semi-permanent kind of mentor relationship. So I told you it's a shorter talk, but I want to leave you then with two things, two more things to think about when moving your career forward in addition to mentoring. So one is your peers. Go and talk to them because talking to different people is going to help you process and see things differently. So ask yourself, who do you know already that you could contact? And how do you continue to build up your network of peers, maybe through events like these? And then consider framing some questions because you're going to come into career questions all the time. And once you frame those questions, then think about who you know and who you could reach out to so that you can get the best information possible and be respectful of people's time. So remember, mentors are great. I genuinely do mean that. You should try and get one. But I think there are more ways to consider when trying to move your career forward. Thank you very much.